Good afternoon, guys. So sorry it's been a minute and I look like a mess today, but I really don't care because I'm cold and I'm over this week. I'm ready for Friday. But um, here I am choking down a not very delicious whey protein shake. Um, I'm choking it down because I kind of have to because I need to get my protein in and what I have on hand doesn't do it. Like, I was going to have a delicious spicy chicken patty boca, but those only have 9 grams of protein. And when you got to hit 55 grams of protein in a day and you only eat three to four times a day, that's not really going to cut it. Um, so I added a splash of raspberry to make it a little bit more tolerable. Um, but ugh, it's fine. It's fine. Like, it's food. I don't even, I'm not even hungry. I don't even really want to eat, but I have to. So it's fine. Like, I miss Shakeology. I will say, I love friggin' Shakeology, but I don't even know how much protein Shakeology has in it. So I'd have to look into that before I could go to that, that route. Cause protein is the game when you've had, um, gastric bypass or gastric sleep. So, which it's pretty amazing to me because they've taught me like how to count nutrients, not calories. So, back in the day when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore, um, <clears throat> and I was in my restricting days, I was so hyper-focused on calories that I never really paid attention to the nutrients, the protein, the, um, I mean, I looked at carbs and sugar, obviously, because I know carbs and sugar are like, according to everybody, right? Um, so I tried to keep those pretty low, but I was never super successful with it um, because I was so obsessed with calories. So everything was calorie based, right? Well, actually what I'm finding now is that by focusing on hitting protein, like protein dense stuff. So, um, and I don't quote me on this because I don't have my sheet, but in one of the diet classes, they, um, they informed me <clears throat> and I wrote it down on my notes, which I just don't have in front of me and I'm not going to go get <clears throat> that you want to look for foods that have like, I think it's like one gram of protein or two grams of protein per every hundred calories or something like that. Um, sorry, my nose was feeling a little wet. Um, it's something like that. I'll, I'll circle back to that in a future episode. Um, but anyway, so what I eat is focused on protein, right? So um, so I always am looking at how much protein and sugar because I can't have too much sugar. Oh, and fat because I can only have so much fat per um, meal or I will get terribly sick and <laughs> don't want to do that. <clears throat> um, same thing with sugar. So I'm always checking to make sure the fat and the sugar are low enough to fit in my meal, um, my meal allotment. And then just making sure that I'm getting as much protein for my buck as I can because, um, again, like, I'm not really hungry, so I only eat three to four times a day because I have to eat that frequently, um, according to the physicians. Um, so I always want to make sure that by the third time I'm eating, then um, I will have gotten at least close to my protein goal close enough to where if I need to squeeze a snack in, I can do it. And if I don't, like, it's not the end of the world because I didn't, you know, only get 20 grams of protein. So today, I think I'll end at, like, 45, which is good because I'm supposed to have 55. I mean, it's only 10 grams off, but it's still not where I'm supposed to be. But there are days when I get a lot over, like, I'm just fished out right now. Fish is such a big protein banger. Like four ounces of the flounder that's baked has like 21 grams of protein in it or something. So, I mean, it's huge. <clears throat> so when I eat fish twice a day and then whatever else I eat, I'm like, yeah, but I just can't bring myself to eat that much fish. Like I like fish, don't get me wrong, but I just can't bring myself to eat that much fish. Um... So, yeah, that, whatever. But anyway, I am going grocery shopping tomorrow, so I'm going to be um, looking for new foods, especially because one week from today, your girl gets to start, like, <laughs> real food. I get to have, um, I get to start having, like, full foods. So right now I'm in the soft food stage. Um, 
So like eggs, which they did not go over well, guys. <laughs> I know I posted that yesterday, uh, a few days ago. I did have some egg whites. It wasn't as bad as the first time, but it still was not very good. And I will probably not eat eggs again. Um, now, I will say that I made meatloaf last night and I had an egg mixed into the meatloaf and that didn't bother me at all. It doesn't seem to bother me to have eggs mixed in and cooked in something, but having just plain eggs or plain egg whites... No bueno for my tummy at this point. So um, if I try it again, it's not going to be for a while. With that said, um, yeah, I wanted to really talk today about progress. And then I want to double back and talk about what it was like in the first few weeks of um, post-surgery, like the full liquid stage, the pain, the gas, all that kind of stuff. Because if you're watching this and you're watching this as part of either your journey or your pursuit of potentially going down this road, I want you to have the information and know and know because, um, I mean, I had a lot of support and a lot of um information at my fingertips and not everybody may have that so I wanted to share that um so I can't post pictures yet because I don't have enough followers um but I wanted to share my progress with you guys because this is huge so one of my um bariatric pals told me to make sure I take pictures um so that I could see progress because I'm not gonna see it in the mirror and other people will see it before I'll really see it now, I've been feeling it because I've put on clothes that um, have never fit, like the shirt that I'm wearing today has never fit me before, but it fits me now. Um, some of my pants and things like that, my underwear are falling off when I walk through my house. I'm not buying any new ones, though, because I'm going to wait until I get down a little bit more and I can go to VS and get the ones I like, you know what I'm saying? woo um, But I think it's super important um, to see the progress. So what I've been doing is every couple of weeks I take pictures, um, and then I do a side by side. I make a collage with my phone and I do a side by side. So let me show you this guys. If I can, I don't think I can do it. All right. I'm going to turn you. It's going to be a little disorienting. So I don't know if you can see that very good. I'm trying to navigate it. So this one here is the day that I went in for surgery. Ooh, this one here is about two weeks three weeks after that and this one here is today so you can see oh geez all right sorry guys there that's better okay so this one woo, woo! <laughs> shot of my crotch hold on Okay, sorry about that, guys. Technical difficulty. So this one here was the day of surgery. This one was the beginning of December, so it was like three weeks, because this happened on the 11th of November, so this was the day that I went in for surgery. This is um, three weeks post-op, and this is today, <clears throat> which is like four weeks and a few days. Um, three. Uh, no, I'm like five weeks. Yeah, f no, four weeks and a few days. It's four weeks and a few days. Um, look at the difference, guys. Like, that's huge. Okay? Um, all right, I'm going to turn you again. <laughs> Sorry for the disorientation. Anyway, um, so that's kind of a big deal. Like, I'm shocked looking at this picture. Like, wow, I don't even feel like I look as different as I do. Um, I mean, like, from the day of surgery, yes. Like, I can see that my face and I can feel, you know, that my clothes are fitting better, that my face is thinning out. I can see it in meetings and stuff like that when I'm on um, video chats. So I totally see that stuff. But, like, my actual body and seeing how much has changed in just these few week increments is huge. So um, it's definitely worth it. I feel great. I have so much energy. I mean, I take vitamins and stuff like that because I have to because of the absorption and things like that. But um, it's phenomenal. I mean, I can't, I can't even say enough good things about the surgery, what it's done for me, my life. Um, okay, frick. I wish I really knew how to work my phone because then maybe I wouldn't have. All right. Whatever. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I can't say enough good things about this surgery. It has given me a whole new life. I have a whole different relationship with food. I don't... 
I don't even understand fully how how this happened the way it happened, but I'm a completely renewed person. Like I'm not a different person because I'm still me, but I'm a completely renewed person. And I can't thank this, the surgery team and the scientists enough for, um, for finding the solution for people like me because it's, <clears throat> it's been a blessing. And I look forward to many more years of health and um, being a support to other people who are on their own journeys for health, whatever that might look like. Because um, I'm not a judgy bitch. I mean, sometimes I can be, but for the most part. Hmm. Yum. Anyway, um, so the first couple of weeks after surgery are really hard. And I'm not going to lie to you. It sucks. Like, I was so tired. I think it took like five or six days before I could even um, stop napping, like multiple times throughout the day. Um, the first five days were probably the hardest because I literally had to like nap every few hours because I was just wiped. Um, and the pain and the gas and the not like the constipation from the opiates that they put you on for the pain, um, which are very minimal, very, very minimal because they're, you know, they're all like, oh God, we, we created a crisis. Never, ever give anybody an opiate ever again. Um, but also, uh, just because, when you're eating full liquids, you don't really have much to expel, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it was so easy to get my protein in in the full liquid phase because between the like protein shakes, like the Premier or the Fairlife protein shakes, which have 30 grams of protein in a whole shake. So if I had one, if I had half for breakfast or half for lunch, um, you know, I was pretty much golden. The soup with the Fairlife milk, because again, the Fairlife milk has like an insane amount of protein, and then you mix it with the cream of chicken soup, which is what I did, or the bone broths, which have like nine grams of protein in just one of those little sippable containers, and they're pretty good. It literally is just like drinking the broth from like chicken soup or beef soup or beef stew. You don't have beef soup. What is that? <clears throat> so, um, Yeah. So it's actually pretty uh, easy in the liquid stage to get your protein in. And um, I found a fun fact out from the dietitian that one of the reasons it's hard to drink plain water, because imagine that, you're supposed to drink 64 ounces of water a day, right? And it is like insanely hard because water is super, super um, tough on the tummy. Excuse me, especially at first. That is one thing I will say, like... I'm super burpy. Like, everything that I eat causes me to burp like crazy. Um, but that's good, according to the surgeons, because they want things moving and churning and whatever. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yes. So, um, the proteins, I think I was talking about the broth. Sorry, I totally forgot. <laughs> Um, so the protein's way easier to get in the full liquid stage, and you're in the full liquid stage for the first two weeks after surgery, and by day 10, 11, I think I already said this in one of the former videos, like, it's tough, because you're like, give me mashed potatoes, or give me death, um, because you just want variety, at least I just wanted variety. It wasn't even about chewing or missing, like, chewing, it was, give me something other than cream of chicken soup, protein shakes, and bone broth, please, for the love of God. Because, like, you could have sugar-free jello and sugar-free pudding and stuff like that, but um, I don't want to eat sweets for a meal, <laughs> which I wouldn't have said back in the day. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. Anyway, um, then I moved into the puree stage, which was, like, mashed potatoes and um, what was my other? Oh, my bariatric pizza with my mozzarella. I was going to share a recipe and I just haven't done it. Uh, I think I have the video on here somewhere. I'll probably share it eventually. Um, marinara and melted mozzarella baked in the oven, right? Like with pizza type seasonings. And oh my God, it's so fucking good. I lived off that. Refried beans, um, taco sauce, things like that. I lived off of that kind of stuff in the pureed stage. Um, but it got a little harder to get my protein in because now I'm moving into foods that, um, while they still have a lot of protein, aren't as protein dense. Um, <clears throat> so that was a little bit of a challenge, but it was um, not as bad. It was still pretty easy because I made my mashed potatoes with my Fair Life milk or my bone broth. And um, I was still having soup and I was still, you know, um, my low fat mozzarella cheese does have a decent amount of protein. So that was um, not a big deal. 
Now in the soft food stage, it's been even harder. And now that I'm in the soft food stage, they want me to get my 55 grams of protein because <clears throat> I'm at that point now where I'm almost healed. I'm almost released to work out. Yes. Although I will say I do this while I sit at, uh, my, da at my desk, my dining room table because not in my actual home. So I don't have an um, office and a desk. I sit at the dining room table until, you know, we move back home. Anyway, that's another story for another time, guys. And I'll work like my arms or I'll put this around my legs and <clears throat> help my booty because I want to keep that booty. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I want to keep my legs strong for running. So I will do that. But I'm not cleared to like do anything else or actually work out, work out yet. So, um, but I'm only two weeks away from that, which is super exciting. Um, but because I'm at that, that point now, they're like, all right, now you need to be getting 64 fluid ounces of um, water or whatever, you know, other sugar-free options and your 55 grams of protein. Well, fuck it. slap my ass and call me Harry because it is difficile. Um, I'm going to get some more of my Premier Protein Shakes and the Fairlife, um, which is 30 grams, like I said. And now I can stomach more than just a half at a time, depending on, um, depending on the shake consistency. Because like Premier, I still have to do half at a time because they're super heavy and thick. <clears throat> I got this lovely 20 grammer thing here. Mmm. Yum. It's not terrible. It's just, it's like sweet and milky. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> so, but next week I move into like being able to eat regular food like anybody else would. I get to start having raw vegetables. Um, I have to take it easy and see what, you know, my stomach will tolerate and things like that, but it's going to be even harder. So just know that it's a process, but you learn as you go and every day is different. Um, those first two weeks are difficult, but they're totally worth it. After about five or six days, like I said, you definitely <clears throat> start to have more energy. Hold on, please. Back. <clears throat> and then, um, and also because you can start taking vitamins. So like I take a B12 supplement, an adult vitamin, a calcium um, supplement, and uh, the Prilosec to help prevent uh, acid reflux for the first year, I guess. Because uh, I guess with bypass that can happen. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, but it is painful those first couple weeks. It's really hard to like get up and down because you've got like a lot of pain in your side. Um, it's not unmanageable. It's not unbearable. It's just you can tell that they cut through some muscle, okay? Because that abdominal muscle like on the right side, everything else wasn't really bad. Like the other incision places were not, <clears throat> were not very sore at all. But that right side where they went through the muscle is a very, very sore for... <sighs> gosh, like four weeks pretty much. Like I'm only now getting to the point where it's not really sore anymore. Um, and like I don't move a little and pull the muscle. So those are just the, the but that's really, um, it gets better after the first two weeks. So the first two weeks is really like you're in a lot of pain and it's hard and you're tired and you're just very, um, like everything's very new every time you eat it's like it's it's like a waiting game to see what's gonna like how your body's gonna react um and then as you get into like the third and fourth week it totally changes like um oh my god word whiskers <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my throat today I don't have the Rona because I've not been anywhere or around anybody it's more, I guess, um, like third and fourth week as your your stomach is just healing and that muscles are those muscles are healing, um, and because you have the supplements and your body's getting used to getting those extra vitamins. Like, I mean, I'm waking up before my alarm goes off, guys. The fuck is that? I went to bed at midnight last night. This morning, my alarm was set for six thirty. I woke up at six twenty five. Fully ready to go. Before that, it was literally, I could go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, set my alarm for 7, and try to snooze that shit for 7 more times because I was so tired I could barely get out of bed. Not to mention, I'd get out of bed to go to the bathroom in the morning and my feet and my ankles would be so stiff and so sore. I had to waddle like a fucking penguin to go to the bathroom. It was 
worrisome because I was very worried that like, what am I doing to my body? And no matter what I tried to do, I couldn't, you know, we've already talked about this. I couldn't get it down. Like I just couldn't lose more than 10 pounds. And I was just so scared that I was going to die early. I was going to end up with diabetes, like all kinds of stuff, you know, like, why am I so sore? Why am I waddling? I'm only 30 something. Like this isn't okay. I just realized Probably like last week, I got up, and again, I've been waking up before my alarm, ready to go, getting dressed. I mean, today I was like, fuck your hair, you're not doing it. Um, before I even leave my house, which before I used to come back from taking my kid, you know, to his uh, daycare, and then I would get ready, because I was just so tired. Don't even need to do that. I get up and I do it first thing in the morning. Excuse me. Um, but I woke up, I wake up. And I'm not in pain. My ankles don't hurt. My feet don't hurt. I don't have to waddle to like wake up my limbs. I can just get out of bed and walk to the bathroom. It's pretty fucking awesome. That's a non-scale victory right there. My clothes fit way different. That's a non-scale victory. Last time I weighed myself was over two weeks ago and I was at 23 pounds down. So I'm pretty sure I've lost more than that. But I don't know because I haven't weighed myself since the 5th of December which was that second picture in the progress photo that I showed you. So anyway, if you have any questions, I feel like I just like talk and then I go off subject and it's fucking crazy. Um, if you have any questions or if you are wondering if the surgery is right for you or um, want to know anything more specific than what I've shared, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will answer you. Um, I will give you any resource or support that I can um, because I want you to be successful and I want you to find the health and wellness that you deserve. So have a great day. Bye.